Uh, Good. There you go. You're going. All right. Uh, I am uh, Jerry W9NPI. Uh, have a little bit of experience in uh, ham radio. Got my license back in uh, 1957, so I had uh, uh, much uh, much more opportunity to make a, mis a lot of mistakes. Different color smoke from uh, my equipment as I uh, overloaded them. Uh, they used to have this uh, old saying: "You turn tune for the densest smoke, so you keep adjusting until uh, things really look good." <laughs> All right. Um, Let's see, share screen. I hope I have everything. All right, uh, we're we're going to do, uh, let's do, 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 do. Okay, we're going to do chapter three, which is uh, a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, we're going to talk about electricity. We're going to talk uh, about magnetism, electromagnetism, uh, it, it'll go into electromagnetic uh, waves. And then we're going to talk about uh, electronic equipment and uh, the uh, pieces that put that make the electronic equipment. All the uh, the parts as parts type stuff, everything from uh, conductors, not insulators, semiconductors, uh, what the uh, semiconductors actually are and what they do, and uh, how everything if eventually gets into making a, a radio wave. Now, uh, one thing I'm going to start with, uh, ancient history, just a, a little bit. Uh, in, in the, By the way, all this stuff, there's a whole lot of stuff. You don't have to know too much about it, but there's a whole lot of stuff. So I'm going to go through it. But the easiest way to get your license to pass the test is to go through as many of those test exams as possible. So you're, uh, you know, we're, we're not trying to uh, drill a hole in your head and uh, put a funnel in and uh, put all that knowledge in. We can't. It's going to take you a couple of years before you uh, really start feeling confident uh, with this stuff. But uh, we're, we're getting you your learner's permit. That's uh, pretty much what we're doing. Okay. Any, any questions so far? All right, and uh, this is open. Please, uh, please. Uh, any questions? Either raise your hand, yell, whatever. Jerry, and uh, you know, we're we're trying to, as uh, as Bob uh, said said in the stuff he sent you, that uh, you know, we're only spending two hours a week, but uh, it's not enough. You guys have to uh, do your part. All right. Uh, ancient history. Back in the uh, 1700s or thereabouts, uh, scientists started working with electricity. Uh, they made uh, something called the Leiden jar. Uh, they made crude batteries. Uh, by the uh, early 1800s, uh, they knew enough to um, uh, make uh, a, uh, what's, what is it called, a, a relay or a solenoid, something that would... Uh, flap when you turned electricity on. And uh, 1843, and uh, actually right, right around that time when the technology was right, uh, a whole bunch of people started making uh, telegraph sets. Uh, Morse was just one of them. There were uh, several guys in England. But uh, what he did was uh, he had a, a long wire, or two, two long wires, and uh, he was able to make a a coil and a, uh, a loose piece of metal click. I think uh, it was about 40, mi 40 miles was the, was the uh, first run of this when they uh, experimented with it. And by uh, making something click, he could make it talk. And uh, before long, they were sending telegrams uh, uh, across uh, most of the uh, settled United States. And uh, you know, that's a long story, but it uh, keeps on going. All right. So uh, by around 1865, uh, people were uh, studying electronics. They were, they were studying uh, electricity, and they were also studying magnetism. And a uh, fellow named uh, James Maxwell Clark uh, decided to study the, the laws of electricity and the laws of magnetism. 
and they were just about identical. And he found that they, they obeyed the same laws. And he came up with the idea, which, which about 30 years later was proven by a fellow named Heinrich Hertz. I think we were talking last week about uh, uh, kilohertz and megahertz and gigahertz. We, we entered him for that. But he proved that uh, this uh, electromagnetic wave uh, theory. And uh, a couple of years later, a fellow named uh, Guelmo Marconi, an Italian, uh, started his experiments and uh, won him a Nobel Prize and uh, made him a uh, multimillionaire selling radios to ships and uh, land stations and all that sort of stuff. And the, uh, the race was on. You know, once uh, these ideas were uh, made practical, uh, just about everyone was uh, producing stuff. And you know, by the 1920s, we had uh, uh, radio broadcasting. And uh, uh, I, I don't know, I, I, I have a series of uh, lectures on radio history and there are some uh, really odd things uh, like uh, making motors uh, generate uh, radio waves and things of that sort, but that's uh, another story. So we'll start off with this. <clears throat> Electricity is a flow of electrons around a circuit. You have a, a power source in this case, something that we we can recognize, a battery. And the electrons go around and do some sort of work. In this case, it's lighting up a lamp. Now you see, it has to, there has to be a circuit. It has to go from you know, positive to through the work or the, or the load to negative. Uh, this chart is showing electron flow, but the actual uh, electrical flow that we use is from positive to the negative. I, I, have, I have a little uh, experimental thing that I'll, uh, I'll show you in a little bit. All right. Now, let's see if I can get to the next one. I think uh, some of the uh, physicists would argue with us that uh, this is too obsolete, but uh, we can still use the, the old-fashioned uh, planetary uh, type of diagram for, uh, for uh, atoms. Uh, each atom that we know of has a nucleus, uh, could be as much as just uh, uh, one piece in there. And uh, a uh, and circling around it is an electron. So it could be one, could be many uh, protons, and one or uh, many electrons. Now, some of these electrons that, uh, or well, sorry, some of these atoms that make up uh, the various elements keep very tight hold onto their electrons. They don't let them uh, go away. So. Uh, uh, so things like, uh, oh, uh, I'm, 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 I'm trying to think, uh, 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 things that uh, you know, make up wood or, uh, or uh, glass, pure silicon, keep tight hold and they will not let electrons flow. Those are called insulators. There are others like gold, silver, copper, aluminum, which keep a looser hold on the electrons. And if an electron starts jumping, it can knock another electron off an atom, which in turn will knock another electron off another atom, and so on and so forth. And this is the flow of electrons. Uh, we don't expect an electron, one electron here to go, you know, 500 miles uh, along a wire, but it, it causes the movement, causes the uh, the action. Okay, everyone with me so far? All right. Uh, this shows uh, you know, one of the first types of, uh, of batteries. You have two plates which are of uh, you know, different uh, materials. 
most mostly uh, in our car batteries, it's uh, uh, copper and lead. And they're in a solution that has a bunch of uh, bunch of atoms which have loose electrons. Uh, in a car battery, this is in this case, we have an acid uh, well, sulfuric acid at a fairly good concentration. And as the electrons flow between them, they can start doing work. In that other diagram, we showed uh, the wire going through. I, I'm not sure what this was supposed to be. Any, anyway, it's uh, going through a light bulb, causing the light bulb to light and uh, back. It is a it is a circuit. Now, what happens if the light bulb uh, burns out, or you, someone goes over and uh, pulls the uh, light bulb out. That is called an open circuit, and uh, there will be no electrons flowing. Uh, what if somebody decides to put a wire around the light bulb socket so it's a continuous wire? That's caused, called a short circuit and will cause the maximum amount of electrons to flow. It's called a current flow. And a short circuit will maximize the amount of flow to a point where so much electricity is flowing that the, even the wires will start burning. Or as uh, you know, some people have uh, found, you short circuit a, uh, a car battery and it turns into a welder. It melts and uh, it, it can also melt whatever is uh, short circuiting. I remember uh, when I was a kid, they first came out with uh, the uh, cadmium, uh, nickel cadmium batteries. And a guy came and gave a little talk about it. And he uh, passed one of the batteries around. So people were admiring it. And then uh, one smart guy decides to uh, take a couple of keys and short circuit the battery. And we heard him yelling, ow! Because that thing heated up quite a bit. Okay. Uh, something that I uh, would do with the kids. I, I, I teach uh, some kids in classes sometimes. And uh, we'd make a uh, battery using either a potato or a lemon. And the uh, material inside the lemon or the potato had enough uh, electrons in there to uh, to flow. And here, this guy is using a strip of aluminum foil and probably a penny or you know something like that, to similar metals. And it, it generates the electron flow, the electricity. Let's see. And here it is. I don't think one lemon would, or one half a lemon, would uh, make enough, uh, furnish enough current to light uh, light emitting diode. But who knows? Okay. Any questions now? All right. That's electrical flow. Now let's. Uh, all right. No, that's not it. Oh, I was going to uh, talk to talk a little more about a conductor. Conductor, here's the conductor. Mm. Okay. Now, uh, let's see. See if I can get this. Um, everyone, see this? Bob, can you see this? Uh, yeah, we're what we're seeing is uh, <laughs> we're we're seeing your um, file folder. Okay, list. but you you're not see you're not seeing this. Uh, all right, I'm going to uh, stop sharing and start again. Okay.
How's that? Okay, there we got it. Okay. Uh, this is a uh, little thing from uh, University of Colorado in Boulder. It's called uh, PHET. If you uh, Google that, you can uh, find a, a bunch of uh, little experiments and things. Uh, what I have here, I, you know, they have wires and batteries and light bulbs and stuff like that, and a couple of meters. So what I have here is a nine volt battery, and I have uh, this is a switch. So right now, what kind of a circuit do we have? Is it a short circuit? Anybody? Open. It's an open, open. circuit, right? Okay. Uh, now you're seeing there is a voltmeter, and uh, well, we we have uh, meters that'll do everything. But in this case, the voltmeter goes across the voltage source, and it uh, tells you what the voltage is. Here, it's nine volts. The current, usually uh, they have to cut the wire and uh, put the current me meter in between it. That shows the, uh, uh, no, roughly the number of uh, electrons going through. The uh, voltage is kind of the, uh, the oomph, the pressure. Uh, your manual will talk about uh, plumbing. And it's, uh, it's pretty fair like that. All right, I'm going to switch this on. The light lights. Bob, is Jeff in the lobby? Uh, no, Jeff's on. Um, Jeff's on Zoom. Oh, I don't. I don't see him on my screen here. Okay. Page, he just texted down. me. I, I see two Jeffs. Jeff P and Jeff uh, Dukowski. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we're. You should be good. Yep. Oh. Sorry to interrupt. Okay. So anyway. Uh, what we have is the wire is uh, you know copper wire usually, and uh, it's flowing through. The light bulb is lighting. In this case, it's an incandescent light, uh, which means that there's a wire that glows very very uh, gets a high temperature and glows white. So you have nine volts. They uh, they say that the the light bulb has a value of 10 ohms. That's the value of uh, resistance, what, it's, uh, what it takes to make the thing work. And the current, the amount of electricity flowing is 0.9 amps. Now, there, there must be some kind of a, uh, a rule or law or something of that sort about this. Uh, 9 volts, 10 ohms. Uh, it's almost like nine divided by 10. Is that, uh, and it comes out with uh, 0.9 amps, 0.9 amount of uh, electricity flowing. We use amperes, that's uh, the French scientist uh, uh, from the 1800s. We honor him with the uh, value of amps. Uh, 10 ohms, uh, yes, there is a, uh, uh, Professor Dr. George Ohm, G-E-O-R-G, -E Ohm, who's honored by uh, that value. You know, use Omega as uh, his symbol. Okay, what's questions so far? I'm going to open this up. I am going to remove this wire. And I'm going to put a uh, a pencil in its place. Come on. Okay. Now, lead pencil is really not lead. It's carbon. Now, what happens when we turn it on? That amount of carbon has a resistance resistance of twenty five ohms. The resistance is uh, kind of what's pushes back or limits the flow of, of uh, current. And uh, it starts heating up as as it uh, does the resistance. It's almost like you're uh, rubbing your hands together and that uh, kind of resistance to motion, you start feeling heat. And you can see that uh, 
there's not very much uh, current going through because of the resistance. resistance. Okay. Now, unhappily, they don't have the dog anymore. They used to, they used to have a, uh, a dog in this uh, selection. That you could, or a, a hand actually, so you could uh, you could tell how much current is flowing through. So, all right, here's uh, an eraser. Uh, the atoms in uh, this eraser hold their electrons very very tight. On some oh, I don't know hundred billion uh, ohms. So what happens when we turn it on? Nothing. So uh, that's an insulator. Uh, some examples of insulators are uh, are what? Mike? Glass, rubber. I can think of one. Air. That's one. Uh, using actually actually using uh, carbon. Where's, where's that uh, where's that pencil again? Now, uh, using carbon, mixtures of carbon, you can uh, make resistors of uh, various values. So uh, there's a, a very, very uh, large uh, selection of uh, values you can put in, and each has its use in a uh, in an electrical circuit. Okay, so. Questions on this? All right. Let's see if I can. You know, the, there's something extra cool about this um, slide, you know, and that is one of the one of the questions on the tests asks how you connect an ammeter and how you connect a voltmeter, and that showed you that slide showed you how you connect a voltmeter in parallel. And an ammeter in series, right? I think I've got another diagram someplace, but uh, let's get out of uh, this one, and let's see what else I've got. Uh, I'm not. Oh, well, a little later we'll uh, get into this, the relationship between uh, the resistance, the current, and the voltage. Uh, the, here again, we differ from the physicists and, uh, because we use E as our symbol of voltage, I as our symbol of current, and R as a symbol of resistance. And we also use P as power, and that's expressed in watts. Okay, I'm going to uh, get rid of this right now. And uh, let's see. Hey, Jerry, just so you know, what we see on the screen is a uh, Microsoft Bing page with FET simulations as the search. Okay, I will stop sharing and uh, start sharing again and see what I can do. Thank you. Please uh, keep me posted on that so I can uh, get no over it. To... It sounded like you were talking about something and then you said you're going to close it away. And I went, oh. I'm thinking that he thinks we see something. <laughs> yeah. Faraday's Law. All right. So do you see uh, what kind of a uh, picture do you see now? I'm not seeing a picture. We're seeing your, uh, your, uh, yeah, the Windows file Explorer. folder with Faraday's Law. 
Oh, you're seeing my uh, you know, my, my uh, attractive face. Okay. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Where where in the world did uh? One second. I have to get to uh. Stop share. And start sharing. How's that? All right. Now we see Much an image better. here of the light bulb in a coil. Yep. Okay. Um, I showed you uh, an electrical way of producing electricity, a chemical way. Uh, there's another way. And it's uh, much more interesting. And it's actually, it uh, gets into uh, what we uh, do with radio. Um, right, do I have... Oh, I... Okay. All right, this is uh, elementary school uh, science class. I think most of you have uh, played around with uh, magnets. Uh, you, you can sprinkle uh, iron filings on top of the magnet. Easier to, better to uh, put a piece of paper on top of the magnet, then spread the, uh, the filings on top of that. And you'll see the lines of force, the actual force field that uh, all these science fiction writers talk about. And these are lines of magnetic force. Now, the interesting thing is that if you put a magnet through a wire coil, usually use copper, you can see as the South Pole goes through and as the North Pole goes through, what happens, the field going through the coil will cause electrons to flow. This is the North Pole, and this is the South Pole. So the electrons flow in one direction this way, and then when the South Pole goes in, the electrons flow in the other direction. Now, what if you put a little pin in the middle, stick the magnet in, and start spinning it round and round and round. Uh, you can attach a motor to it. Uh, the motor can be attached to uh, either a, uh, a a boiler that's fired up by coal or a boiler that's uh, fired up by a, an atomic pile. So you, ha you have a generator that generates electricity. Now, because it's the field always has to be moving for the electrons to flow. It's always going to, you, you always have to have this thing spinning. If you stop, nothing happens. So uh, that's why we have alternating current where you, it goes from zero to high to zero to, I'll show you a picture of that a little later on, zero to zero to high to zero to low to zero to high. No, it alternates back and forth. And uh, one of our problems, is, especially with power supplies for our radios, is that we have to take that alternating current and change it back to direct current imitating a battery. Okay, questions on this? Uh, something a little later on. Uh, the the more coils you have, the more uh, loops you have, the more electron flow. This doesn't go as far because it has fewer coils. And later we'll see what happens when there's an alternating uh, coil that has alternating uh, no, current of an electrical field and the second coil, which is not attached to this one, will pick up the electromagnetic field and cause its own current to flow. That's uh, it's called coupling, and uh, it's the basis on which transformers are made. And, uh, we do a lot of stuff with uh, with transformers of uh, various values. Okay, any questions so far?
All right. I'm going to get rid of that and stop share. We'll find something else that's uh, interesting. Okay. Two kinds of current. This is direct current. Everyone see this? Yes. Okay. Yes, we do. Let me know. Okay. Steady direct current from chemical action from battery will just be steady. It may start going down as the chemical action of gets old or uh, no, the uh, the acid loses its uh, potency or something of that sort, but it's going to be steady. You can uh, use a switch to turn things on from zero to the voltage and zero. If you uh, click it in a certain way, it'll go down like that. And that that's a different uh, type of waveform. And here is what's coming out of our uh, power station as the uh, little uh, magnet spins up, down, up, down, up, down, uh, and to zero. Now a, a cycle or hertz, you measure it from the zero point to the peak to the lowest point and back to the zero point. Now you can start almost anywhere. If you go from here down to here, you have to end up here, but that's one complete cycle. And uh, we, we had that last week, actually, uh, Mike, uh, you, were, you were explaining that. Okay. Um, let's see, is there anything else? Revert. Okay. Number of cycles per second is the frequency. And uh, as of the 1960s, we uh, started honoring the scientists. It used to be cycles per second or kilocycles and megacycles. Now it's hertz. Okay. We're talking about circuits path from one side of the energy source to the other. And let's see if uh, this will show us. Okay. Now here you have a circuit. The electricity flows all the way th through each of these pieces through the wire back. Now, if you're talking about the old fashioned Christmas lights, if one Christmas light goes out, what happens to the other uh, lights? They stay on? No. If this goes out, it makes an open circuit. The others go out too. Yeah, just go, everything goes up. Parallel circuit. Each of these are attached across the uh, voltage source or the, the electrical source. So if this goes out, these are still good. So I don't know. I, I don't string Christmas lights, so I, I don't know. Bob, do, do they still make them? Uh, uh, the old-fashioned way, if one goes out, they all go out, or uh, is there some kind of a, an alternate way now? Yeah, I don't know. I, um, <laughs> I'm afraid I haven't put up Christmas lights in ages. Yeah, the the All the lights now are LED, and they're all strung parallel. All strung parallel. Okay, so, yep. you know, so if one goes, then uh, no problem. 
Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about uh, LEDs in just a little bit. They are marvelous things. Okay. Um, uh, all right. Uh, I'm, I'm going to, well, because of the amount of uh, stuff I'm going to go through, you know, it's a uh, mile wide and an inch deep. I'm going to uh, let you play with the practice questions in, uh, in your books and try to get to the uh, next. No, this doesn't uh, do it for me. All right, I'm going to uh, close that and stop sharing. Okay. Uh, well, Okay, let's see. Okay, here's the uh, the water flow scheme for this. The pump is pumping water. Oh, the Jerry, pressure. we're Jerry. Yeah, we're not uh, seeing that. You're not. Okay, I'll you'll see it in a moment. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we were seeing a page of text. How's that? <laughs> now we got it. There you got okay. it. Okay, so the pump is pumping away, and uh, the pressure is the voltage, and the amount of flow is the current. Uh, in electricity, you've got a battery that's our pump, and the the pressure is called what? Voltage. Voltage, right. So the amount of flow is called. You want amperes or? Current. Current. Mm -hmm. Yeah, voltage is uh, measured in volts. Current is measured in uh, amperes. In years. And as the uh, Borg say, uh, resistance, resistance is useless. Um, futile. Futile, right. I was going to correct him, but I thought, no, I'll let it go. <laughs> <laughs> I was just checking you with yeah. my nerd credentials. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I always wondered whether uh, those uh, board characters with all the gear uh, hanging from them, their eye sockets, stuff like that, whether they ever had a chance to take a bath. <laughs> Um, uh, where? No, I think they just stopped for an oil change. <laughs> yeah, the dumps. Okay. Okay, we did the current. Um. Okay. Series parallel, we already did. Um, you can't see these things. I'm just going through all all, all these things. All right, um, all right, I'll stop share and start share. Okay, and uh, yes, we see it. Okay, the famous circle. The famous circle. I don't. I don't think I have that picture uh, of handy of. Uh, you know, a, a guy with a rope squeezing another guy who's pushing him through the uh, through the loop. That's uh, an example of, of voltage, uh, current, and resistance. But uh, uh, this is a very simple diagram. If you want to know the resistance of a circuit, you put your thumb on the R and take the voltage divided by the uh, current, that's resistance. 
if you want to know what the uh, voltage is, you know, you'll have some uh, practice questions on, on that. You put your thumb on the voltage and multiply the current times the resistance. Uh, I, I, I've been trying to uh, get, get uh, some of these kids into Ohm's Law that I'm teaching, but they're uh, uh, usually around fourth or fifth grade and they're uh, barely, barely into algebra. So uh, something like this with a uh, hand calculator would probably uh, solve it for them. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. So examples of how to use Ohm's law. Okay, you can see that uh, these two examples have an ammeter. And uh, what's the uh, big thing about an ammeter? To uh, measure the amperes flowing through a uh, circuit, flowing through that wire, uh, does the meter have to be connected in series or parallel? The ammeter is got to be series. I think I heard series. Series for an ammeter. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The ammeter actually does have a little bit of resistance in itself, but it's uh, it's a series. So, in this case, we know that two amperes are flowing through the circuit. I equals two amps. We know the resistor has a certain value that's ten ohms. So. And we don't know what the voltage is. So E equals I times R. So voltage equals 2 times 10. So this battery should be supplying 20 volts. You will have a whole bunch of uh, test questions in the, in this vein. In in this case, uh, uh, let's see if somebody can uh, figure this out. We don't know what the current fl flow is. We do know what the battery is, and the what the resistor is. So try to figure that out. Current equals. Can you see this uh, circle, or uh, am I going to have to uh, do a screen sharing again? No, I can see. We can see it. The okay. EIR circle, yes. Yeah. Okay. So you're you're going to use that formula. You want to know what the I is. So you put put your finger on the I. So the answer is E divided by R. So in this case, E is twelve, R is six. What do we got? Come on, everyone, jump up. Two amps. You got it. Yay. Okay. All right. Now, oh, let's see, where else should we be? Um, Jeff's got a question or two. We're trying to trying to help him get off mute. He was texting me. Okay. Does he have a question about the uh, what, I, what we're uh, just learning or uh, uh, how, can, how to get I to? Can't, I can't unmute him. Uh, Jeff? Well, can, uh, Jeff, Jeff Dukowski or Jeff P? Uh, Dukowski. He, I don't show him as being on mute. Try to talk, Jeff. Nope, we're not getting nothing. Uh, something's in his, his mic then because it might I, be he's the mic. not muted. He's not muted, so. All righty. Can, can we see him? I, I'm not uh, looking. At, can we see yeah, his we picture? Can see him. Yep, yep. He's there waving at us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. oh, uh, Jeff, can you type your question in the chat? Yeah, do that.
And while we're waiting for uh, Jeff's message, take a look at the uh, <clears throat> uh, two messages that I put on recording should be on Jury's W9NPI channel on YouTube. I know the lesson was there already. And then uh, for a free no-nonsense ham study guide, go to kb6nu.com. And uh, for free, you can get a, a PDF uh, copy of it. I don't think it's as, uh, well, it's uh, it's very condensed. I'm not sure it's as, uh, as thorough, but it's a, a good alternate uh, to prepare yourself with. Okay, and I don't see anything from uh, Jeff yet. Uh, I, I'd suggest uh, maybe Jeff uh, call Mike on the phone. Okay. This question came up. Okay, I'm going to uh, stop share right now. Okay, he, he does have a, a good comment in the chat. Where he says, right now, the electric car batteries are a good example of a parallel circuit. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. Actually, as far as uh, 7,500 AA batteries, um, I did take a nine volt battery apart to show the kids. And what you have are uh, six little potatoes, six, six little sacks of uh, some kind of electrolyte. I think it's alkaline uh, type stuff, mostly. Um, and uh, you have little piece of zinc and a, a little piece of uh, copper in each. And they're put in series. So uh, each each of them are about a volt and a half. So six times 1.5 equals uh, nine volts. That's how you get your nine volt battery. Okay. I'm going to close that now. Where are we? Uh, and find the uh, share screen. Okay. okay, at the moment, we just see text. Which of the following describes alternating current? Yes, okay, that's it. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, pressure and flow, not all that stuff. Series parallel. Okay. Uh, nowadays, if you go over to uh, Harbor Freight, for seven or eight bucks, you can get yourself uh, a multimeter, which will measure voltage, current, and ohms. Uh, the ohm meter uh, function of that thing actually has a uh, small circuit with uh, a known uh, resistance and uh, voltage source, and the uh, meter measures the uh, flow and its. Uh, uh, translated into the uh, the amount of resistance, the uh, the ohms. Uh, these things, yeah, good, thanks, Bob. Yeah, these these things are uh, accurate enough for us at this point. You can yep. uh, you can yep, we're just holding up the same thing. Yeah, you can spend hundreds of thousands of dollars for those, but uh, I mean, uh, I, you know, there there are some people who will uh, take their Ferrari to the grocery store for a gallon of milk. But uh... <laughs> so anyway, these things are uh, highly sensitive. The uh, parts are so cheap nowadays that uh, uh, you can make an eight dollar uh, meter that's uh, pretty accurate. The uh, thing is, they're very sensitive. Uh, for instance, if you if you measure, let's see, is there a uh, Okay, here's the uh, meter. Uh, 
Okay. You have uh, sets of terminals here. Uh, there's a common one that's uh, used for measuring all of these. One is good for measuring volts and ohms. And you have two ranges that will vo measure current. 300 milliamps. You remember from last week, we were talking about um, milliamps, that's a thousandth of an ampere. And we have uh, one that measures 10 amperes. Now, if you put voltage in while you're measuring ohms, uh, you'll have smoke. Uh, it's one of the big fa safety features, and it's one of the questions on the exam. Number one, make sure that you don't exceed the uh, ratings. If you have a no, I don't. I don't know if anyone has an old radio that uh, will generate five hundred or thousand volts, but uh, no, that that can fry something like this. This is these guys are uh, designed for uh, much lower voltage nowadays. So don't measure ohms. Don't don't measure volts with uh, with the ohm setting. Okay. All right. Um, we did this, this, this. Okay. Okay. I'm going to uh, go through uh, various kinds of components now. I will stop the share and start it again. Okay, everybody see this? Components and units? Yep, we see yep. it. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, uh, first of all, I'm going. This this diagram is a. Uh, it's called a schematic diagram. It doesn't show how the uh, parts are actually placed in the unit on the board on the circuit board or in the box. It just shows how they're connected. And we have certain convention conventions, and uh, a little later on, in it, you have a chart that has. Uh, all of these uh, different parts and their diagrams. All right, for, for instance, uh, this is a plug and it's used for uh, our uh, voltage supply from the uh, wall. Uh, you can see that there's a, uh, a smaller terminal, a larger terminal, and uh, that little plug. Each has its own, uh, its own purpose. The smaller one is the hot terminal. Uh, this is actually, oh, it's, it's, it's called uh, uh, neutral, and this is ground. Neutral and ground should be the same. If they're, if they're not, if there's a voltage between them, we have a device called the uh, ground fault interrupter, which uh, you'll see in kitchens and uh, bathrooms more than anywhere else, which will uh, pop the circuit until something is corrected because you can get a nice shock if these two are uh, at different voltages. All right, this is uh, one type of diagram for a fuse, and it's called F1, fuse one. That's a switch. This is a switch that uh, just uh, goes one, one way, on or off. It's usually off. You switch it to one on, and that that's all it does. On off on off. There are more sophisticated ones. So I'll show you my uh, uh, Dr. Frankenstein uh, picture a little later on. Okay. Uh, we. This thing is a called a transformer, and what it is, it's a coil that gets alternating current makes a magnetic field and you you can see that no this is this is this gizmo is uh, 
just a, an iron core, a piece of iron. It's not really uh, attached to either the wires. And on the other side, we have another coil. And this coil picks up the field, electrical field that's generated by the first one. This is called a secondary. And if you have uh, a smaller number of turns on this side than this one, then the voltage is going to be lower. If there's a larger amount of uh, turns than on this side, then it's going to be higher. We we're talking about conductors and insulators, and we have something called a semiconductor. And uh, very interesting properties. Uh, a little later on, we'll talk about uh, the nitty gritty of them. But what they do is they only elect, allow one cycle of the top, either the top cycle or the bottom cycle of an alternating current to pass through. Uh, it's made of silicon with uh, uh, various kinds of uh, additives like arsenic and stuff like that. And uh, does a uh, pretty good job. There are different kinds of diodes. Like uh, this one sort of acts like a resistor. If the voltage gets too high, it will act as a resistor and try to bring the voltage down. It's called a Zener diode. Uh, this one, you can see these arrows coming out. It means it is converting electricity, electron uh, flow, into photons, into light beams. We have others uh, that will do just the opposite, like a photoresistor, or not, not a photoresistor. We have uh, the solar cells, which take light and convert it into electron flow. Instead of using a, a chemical agent, it uses energy directly from the sun. These are resistors. That's a diagram for a resistor. Mostly, you know, carbon and various other things that resist the flow of electricity. And you can see the little arrow here means that you can adjust it. It's like a volume control. Okay. Uh, this thing is called a capacitor. And what it usually is, is a uh, two sheets of tin foil with uh, some wax paper in between and rolled up. And when you're working in an, an electrical field, this will store electricity, sort of like a uh, battery. There are different values depending on uh, what they're used for. In a power supply, this would be a very high value. In uh, radio, uh, think radio deter uh, frequency determination, it'd be a, an extremely small value. So we're talking about uh, microfarads and picofarads. So microfarad is a th thousandth of a farad. Picofarad is a, um, a million millionth of a farad. Yeah, what? Uh, 10 to, to the uh, minus 12, I think it is. So each, each has its own use. Okay, any questions on this? Okay, here's, here's it is. All right, everyone see this uh, picture of different kinds of resistors? Yes, yep. we get we got it. Okay. Uh, they come in uh, various uh, sizes. Uh, this is for a, uh, this will handle an awful lot of current. And uh, it, uh, it heats up quite a bit. I remember I, I built a 1500 volt power supply and I was using uh, one of these guys I didn't didn't have to be that big, but I I had it, so I used it to uh, kind of drain off 
the current of the capacitor. And so in high school, sometimes uh, we would uh, take a capacitor, charge it up with a uh, 100 volts or so, and uh, just leave it on the counter for someone else to pick up, zap. So this, this uh, would bleed off the, uh, the voltage. And you can see uh, how tiny some of these things are. Different kind, different uh, substances. Um, uh, this this one, uh, it's a uh, almost like a sand type of uh, material, and it's they're designed to get hot and dissipate the heat. Uh, there are some that are made out of metal. I can't ex expand this one, but uh, uh, they're uh, designed to be bolted onto a. Uh, another piece of metal, which will help to dissipate the uh, current. Uh, this band is actually, actually uh, there's a slot on the other side of the resistor. And uh, this this band goes into, uh, has a little feeler that goes into the slot. You could adjust the resistance by sliding that up and down. Okay, questions? Okay. Everyone see the capacitors? Yep. Okay. Um, I don't like the way they draw this. Um, that's not really a D. Sometimes, well, if, if there are two straight lines, it means it doesn't have a polarity. If there's a straight line on one side and a curved line on the other, then it means it's polar, polarized. It has a plus and a minus side. So this one is non-polarized. Um, it's uh, 1,000 volts. It can, uh, you can use it for quite a bit. And I guess uh, N750 is the, uh, the tolerance. So I, I don't know, 100, probably 100 uh, picofarads or, or something. It's supposed to be uh, microfarads. Okay. But uh, anyway, this is used in uh, radio frequency circuits to, uh, to bypass uh, static and un unwanted stuff. All right. Different varieties. Here, here are polarized ones. And uh, you know, if you if you wanted to, you could slice one of these guys open. Uh, use rubber gloves, though. I don't want to get the uh, stuff inside on your uh, hands because they uh, they coat the wax paper with uh, various stuff. But you can unroll it and uh, see what it's like. Use different kinds of materials for the insulators and uh, and uh, conductors. I know that. Uh, uh, Mr. Marconi had a very high power radio station and he had a large room that was uh, that had a lot of glass plates. The glass was used as an insulator for the middle. And uh, there, there are other types of uh, capacitors that uh, just use air, just uh, metal plates with uh, air in between. Uh, when I get home, I can show you a couple of uh, large, uh, large ones. I call them cheese slicers, actually. Okay, questions so far? All right, the farad is a, a huge unit. That's why uh, things are uh, divided divided into uh, smaller pieces. Like this is 470 microfarads. That's uh, a millionth of a farad, 470 millionths of a farad. Uh, although uh, you can buy, uh, I think, uh, two or three farad capacitors. And uh, once you get those babies charged up, they sort of act like batteries. They hold a charge for an awful long time. Now, this is on the electrical side of things. All right, everyone got this straight? Yeah, Jerry? Um, yeah. Dennis has uh, put a comment out in the chat that's kind of yeah. interesting. He said, you might want to comment on the danger of reverse polarizing an electrolytic capacitor. Danger. Dennis, by the way, is an electrician. <laughs> danger? 
kind of danger is there? Boom. Yes, they explode. It's uh, not a good thing to do that. So uh, make sure that you're, uh, if you're wearing something up, and you know, some of you might uh, try to do some some uh, things. Power supplies are fairly easy. But uh, make sure you have the uh, the right polarity. Okay. Now we're getting into the other side of the uh, electromagnetic uh, space. This is the magnetic space. Now, current flowing will cause a magnetic field. When the current stops flowing, the magnetic field collapses and forces electrons to flow in the wire. Now, this is one that uh, just uses uh, air. It's, uh, you know, we, we, we don't need uh, you know, that much insulation just to make sure that just make sure that uh, uh, you know whatever voltages you have aren't going to uh, start sparking into each turn. In order to increase the value, the the, uh, the size of the magnetic field, the there is a uh, well there there are different kinds of uh, materials, uh, iron cores and things of that sort, powders that are molded into disks like this, or I guess they're called toroid forms, and you wind around them, uh, something like this would be equal to a coil that's probably around uh, five times the number of turns. It's because that uh, a ferrite core increases the magnetic field. And here are the diagrams for the in, for the inductors and uh, we use Henry as the unit of measurement uh, these guys would be uh, micro Henry's or milli Henry's micro Henry's well, variable components I was talking about that and the, these are the potentiometers and uh, you've probably seen a lot of these things in uh, various, if you cracked open the uh, radio or a computer, see little things to uh, make some adjustments, volume controls, so on and so forth. Potentiometers or, or pots. All right, uh, I think I was telling you about this. Transfers energy. If this from one side from the uh, from the uh, electrical uh, power socket in the wall to something else you could use. Uh, there are a couple of uh, types of power supplies that we use for radio equipment. And uh, one of them uses a uh, large transformer. It's probably around 15 or 20 pounds thereabouts. And uh, it's, it's a brute, but it's uh, dependable. Uh, they have, there's another type that's uh, uses a transistor circuit that uh, instead of uh, running on 60 cycles, which our uh, power company uh, gives us, it uh, operates on uh, 400, 1200 uh, uh, cycles or, or hertz per second. The more hertz per second, the lighter the core can be. So they can use very light tra transformers. So I have uh, two power supplies for my radio equipment. They both have the uh, the same capacity, so like 25 amperes. And uh, one weighs you know, 20, over 20 pounds. The other one weighs about uh, four pounds. So uh, a lot of people like the lighter ones. Questions? Uh, there's one that's, uh, you don't see that much uh, it's called an isolation transformer. So uh, you don't have to worry about uh, stepping on the ground and uh, shocking yourself. So it just isolates the, uh, the ground from uh, the, the wall and uh, gives you the same voltage on the other side. All 
Okay, you guys are, uh, I hope you're attentive. We'll see. All right. Now here's where it goes, gets uh, kind of interesting. Oh, is, is everyone okay? Everyone following you? Do you need a couple minutes to uh, uh, flush something or uh, have a drink of water, something like that? As I, I've been talking without, uh, without too much delay. Anybody? Yeah, okay. guys, it's your chance to go get a beer. <laughs> Or go uh, go release the beer. Okay, there we go. All right. Now, when you start talking about radio type frequencies, instead of sixty hertz, you get down up to. Uh, 600,000 hertz or 600 kilohertz. You're talking about radio waves, or well, you're talking about uh, current that's alternating at a point where it's going to uh, start uh, uh, getting out. Uh, I think we, uh, we made it clear that all the stuff we we're talking about that's happening inside of radio is just uh, electrons moving. It doesn't become a radio wave, an electromagnetic wave, until it hits the antenna. Then it takes off and uh, goes through the uh, the atmosphere. Um, I'm pretty sure that uh, if, if there are, are people in uh, Alpha Centauri or beings in Alpha Centauri, they're probably enjoying I Love Lucy. It's, uh, well, depending on how uh, how sensitive your equipment is, those radio waves just uh, keep on going. Anyway, when you're talking about very high frequencies, a coil, which you know, if if you uh, if you put a, a meter on uh, the coil, it has uh, hardly any value, uh, hardly any resistance. You, when you're uh, playing with direct current, when you're pay playing with uh, high alternating currents. This thing will act as a uh, a pretty big resistor, and the capacitor also acts as a pretty big resistor, but in the opposite direction. So, if you if at a different a certain frequency, the value of this resistance and the value of this resistance, the minus resistance, sort of equalize out. They will pass. They were they're considered resonance, and uh, they will pass the uh, radio frequency current through. Uh, there are two configurations. I don't think this is the right configuration. But uh, if uh, the capacitor is in series with the inductor, it will allow a radio frequency to pass through. If it's in parallel like this, we'll block it. Uh, in my area, I, I live in uh, Oak Park, Michigan, and uh, when TV was first uh, uh, being set up, uh, the the whole Detroit metropolitan area was much much smaller. They said, "Let's put the antennas out into the sticks." Uh, no one lives there. Well, I live there now, and I'm suffering because I have uh, all these high-powered radio stations and TV stations that are uh, just uh, you know thundering out there with uh, radio energy. And uh, if I turn on my FM radio, I can find one station on uh, six parts of the dial because the circuits are being overloaded. Uh, what some people have done is to make a circuit, uh, especially a, uh, a series circuit, that would allow a certain frequency to pass through. They attach it to the antenna and attach the other side to ground. 
So it lets the signal from the station that I don't like go directly to ground. And uh, it uh, doesn't have any effect on the on the stations or the frequencies of the stations that I want. And uh, we'll, we'll see later on when we talk about antennas, how these they use these traps to artificially lengthen or shorten the, uh, the length of an antenna. So you can use the uh, same antenna for uh, different frequencies. John, you look like you're uh, really puzzled. You're scratching your chin. What's going yeah, on? Uh, out in the chat, out in the chat, John has asked about um, inductive capacitance and. Um... Oh, that's what we're talking about. Yeah, uh, right. X, what, are, what does XL and XC stand for? I don't understand. It that's XC, that's the, that's the uh, XL and is the resistance the reactants and the reactants. reactants. Yeah, we, we say reactants instead of resistance when we're talking about uh, these uh, high frequency uh, alternating current things. So the inductive reactants and the capacitive reactants sort of cancel them out. So the circuit's resonant. Now, sometimes you'll have a, a variable inductor so you can change that and uh, ch change, well, like uh, I was saying, uh, try, trying to, uh, to tune a, uh, a radio frequency away from your receiver. You'd uh, use something like, you'd use a, uh, a circuit with a variable uh, capacitance so you can zero in on the one you, you want, on, on the frequency that you want resonated down into ground. Okay, Did I answer your question? Yeah, I'm just I'm just puzzled because the conductance and uh, each uh, inductance and conductance are both different uh, different um, well, parameters. So I don't know how they can be equal. Con That's conductance is uh, actually uh, the the opposite of uh, resistance. So it's, it's a to totally different uh, ball game altogether. I'm trying to trying to think. Yeah, the, C is, the C is not conductance. The C is capa um, capacitance. Yeah, capacitance. Capacitance. Yeah. Capacitance. Okay. Okay. So tune here. It says tune circuit X as a. Uh, Let's move this guy up. Tune circuit S as a filter passing and rejecting signals as at its resonant uh, frequency. So uh, if I uh, if I have a uh, a piece of antenna which I have uh, you know 30, 34 feet up uh, on on the tower, it's uh, the piece is about 32 feet long and it has two traps in, in, uh, in each side. The trap doesn't do anything unless you get to a certain frequency. For instance, the 32 foot, 30 foot length, two length, 32 foot length would be used for the uh, 14 megahertz or uh, 20 meter band needs that. Well, we'll talk about antennas a little later, but for uh, 15 meters or 21 megahertz, I only need a, uh, instead of 32 feet, I need uh, 21 feet. So that trap will not allow the uh, 21 megahertz signal to go to the end of the antenna. It uh, keeps it within a tw 21 foot uh, thing. And if I'm operating on uh, the uh, 10 meter band or 28 megahertz, uh, the third trap in there will operate only if I'm operating on uh, 28 megahertz and it will keep my uh, transmitter power from going beyond the 
16 feet. So that's, that's one of the beauties of living crib. Okay, you know, Mike is holding up a uh, an antenna. It's yeah, it's an antenna that I'm working on right. You know, that I was working on that I haven't finished yet, but it's uh for two meter and seventy centimeter, and this coil right here is the trap that Jerry's talking about, yeah. and yeah. so when I'm using seventy centimeter, the wave will only use this piece of the antenna. But when I'm using two meter, it uses the whole antenna from end to end. Yeah, and uh, there's no capacitor in there because the uh, capacitive uh, quality of the uh, antenna wire itself is enough at that frequency to, uh, to work. Right. Okay, thank you. Okay, questions? Okay. Um, let's see. All right, diodes. Now here, here, here's the thing. People have used different things for diodes. For, for instance, when I was saying. Uh, Oh, ch changing alternating current into uh, a sort of pulsating uh, direct current. Oh, I don't know, this is pro probably way beyond uh, uh, your, your uh, memory and time span. But uh, people used to make crystal radios. The crystal radio uh, it had uh, an anode and a cathode. Uh, you'd saw it Connect it to uh, one end to an antenna. You'd connect uh, a uh, headset in series. And what it would do, it would draw the uh, radio frequency from uh, a uh, radio station, turn it into pulsating direct current, which made the uh, little uh, plates in the headphones vibrate. And you could listen to uh, stations. To make it more effective, uh, you would make a resonant circuit. You'd uh, wrap wire around a uh, Quaker Oats box, and uh, have a have a uh, capacitor that uh, you'd beg your father to buy. And uh, if you wanted to uh, do it up even uh, more, you would make another coil of wire around a cream of wheat box and stick that inside. And that would be the uh, one that you would uh, attach the uh, headphones to. Okay. And you can, you can see like uh, anode, cathode. Um, I'm not sure why they're uh, showing the wires in this way. If the wires are going away it's a light emitting diode. If it goes in, it's a uh, a uh, photoresistor, or it's a uh, it, it actually is converting light into electricity. And the cathode has a stripe next to its end. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, any anyone's head ex exploded? Jeff, are you wearing that to cover the explosion part? Okay, good. I remember an old uh, far side cartoon. You no, know. Mr. Richard, may I go home? My brain is full. <laughs> I, I have been uh, re really giving a lot of stuff. Okay, transistors. Well, for, well, first of all, a diode is. Where, where are we? Oh. Okay, a diode has two terminals. 
So it's uh, two two types of uh, material, silicon uh, material or something more exotic, and uh, the way they're built. That's beyond uh, our uh, pay grade at this point. The way they're built, they only pass one of the one of the cycles of or one of the half of the hertz and block the other half. Depending on how, how you hook this up, it'll either let the positive go through or the negative go through. If you put another, oh, this thing's, my goodness, we're missing something. There should be a uh, piece of uh, wire going out there, maybe in the uh, the next. Anyway, a transistor has uh, this P silicon material and the N uh, solid material, material. And uh, they also have a couple of uh, little pockets where they put some impurities in and attach a lead. Now, what happens there, let's see if this uh, a little more complete. Okay, well, we'll start here. You can see this arrow. That's the polarity of the uh, transistor. If it goes out, it's called a, a PNP type of uh, transistor. And uh, you have to... Uh, use a, uh, a negative voltage to uh, get the thing to operate right. If the, wait, I'm sorry, if the arrow is going in into the uh, into the plate here. It's called a PNP. If it's going out, it's called NPN. And you use a, uh, a positive voltage. That's more like uh, the old radio tubes. So what happens, this lead, I mean, they're different labels, but it's uh, still the, uh, the, the same kind of thing. Uh, this lead goes to a small voltage, maybe a microphone, maybe a small switch, maybe even a photocell. The actual circuit that you're trying to control flows through this part. And the higher the voltage on uh, this little one, the more more voltage, more current will flow on this side. It's almost like you're uh, turning the handle of a uh, faucet and getting a huge flow of water through. The British, when they first uh, started working with uh, radio tubes, actually called them valves, because it was uh, pretty much what they did. Okay, so gate, or it's uh, gate or base. Collector emitter is the where the uh, current is going to flow through, and the collector. Uh, I'll, I'll get a uh, diagram. Uh, going in a minute. Okay, so this is uh, something you'll have to uh, know about gate drain source and uh, emitter collector base or uh, the uh, way a transistor will uh, regulate or, or boost uh, the, the uh, capacity of a uh, signal. Uh, the small signal, well, you can measure the small signal and see how it amplifies. And that's called the gain. So you, if you have a gain of 50, five volts times 50 is 250. So that, that's how that uh, will work. So uh, well, usually they use uh, several stages, but from your microphone, which is a very, very low, uh, low voltage, low current uh, device, uh, you can uh, make a, a nice PA system or a, uh, a loudspeaker or one of those horns to encourage uh, <clears throat> encourage your friends. All right, 
Questions? Okay. Integrated circuits. Uh, if you see it's starting to crawl away, swat it. But uh, this is whole bunches of uh, transistors and resistors and capacitors yeah. all inside. And uh, they have different functions. Uh, uh, some of these, uh, you, don't even, you don't even care uh, what's inside. It's like a black box where you put certain signals in here and certain signals come out. Uh, some of these are uh, very handy. They've used them as uh, timers, as uh, oscillators. Uh, we'll get into that uh, later with circuits. Uh, but but uh, if you if you look at the uh, central processing unit of a computer, that is an integrated unit which may have millions or billions of transistors in it. Uh, that's why they call it high technology, trying to uh, produce something like that. All right. Uh, oh. I know, it's more, more of a general class type of uh, question, but sometimes uh, if you put a signal in here and no signal there, nothing will come out. If you put a signal there and a signal there at the same time, then a uh, some voltage will come out. Uh, there are tables, they're called truth tables, which uh, will tell you what will happen if you, depending on uh, what voltages you can put in. Some you have to put both in, that's a, called an AND gate. Some nothing in and it conducts, that's a, uh, an OR, on uh, a NOR gate and uh, some, either one, it's uh, an and or gate. Okay. Okay, other parts of the uh, uh, circuitry, especially if you uh, get into uh, power supplies, fuses, Showed the fuse in that uh, schematic diagram, either as a, a solid uh, cylinder or a little uh, jiggly line. Uh, you can see examples of different kinds of fuses. These are uh, usually automotive, although you can't see them in some ham equipment. And if you look uh, closely enough inside, you'll see this little ziggle. And what it is, it's a uh, piece of metal that uh, heats up e easily. And if too much current flows through, it uh, burns up, burns out, and uh, you have an open circuit. That's a protector. Circuit breaker. Most of us uh, have that in our houses now, and it uh, it clicks when there's uh, too much current. As far as the fuses go, there are uh, different kinds of uh, metals inside the fuse. Some, like this one. Might be a uh, quick blow for sensitive equipment. Uh, others like this might uh, be able to withstand a heavy current for a very short time. That's if a uh, motor starts. So you don't want the fuse blowing every time the motor starts. So it uh, gives a little leeway. Okay, the ground fault interrupter. Uh, you'll read about this. It uh, detects any kinds of uh, voltage variations between the, the neutral and the uh, ground parts. Supposedly, the neutral and ground uh, part of the uh, electrical socket meet down by the uh, entry of the, uh, the power line. But sometimes there's a, a fault, and you can uh, get a fatal uh, bit of voltage. So th this thing is supposed to hits as soon as it uh, detects that kind of very voltage variation. And uh, once every once in a while, you push the test button and see if these things pop. All right. The switches. It's a single pole 
single throw SPST. This one has a choice. You've sometimes seen those in uh, in houses where you have an upstairs, downstairs. Double pull, double throw. It throws two different circuits. And a push button. And these are different kinds. Push button. Uh, this one actually uh, controls several circuits. It's a, uh, a twist dial for uh, in the old radios, a you know, band switch or something like that. This is called a tile switch. This is a slide switch. And uh, this thing goes onto a uh, circuit board and soldered in. And these are uh, different little switches that uh, go up or down. And uh, you see these on uh, computers, especially. A relay is an electromagnet that controls a switch. You see those in cars, uh, the car starting relay. You don't want to start the car from the uh, from the uh, steering column. That's too much current. So you use a small small current to trigger the relay, which switches the large current. Okay. All right. So, review. Single pull, single throw. Yep. What's missing here? Oh, the ground. Yeah. It sort of looks like these are almost equal, though, doesn't it? Oh, that's an old fashioned yeah. uh, one. Actually, I was looking at an Electronics Illustrated uh, magazine from, uh, I think, 1958. And it showed how to make a uh, really budget type of uh, uh, radio transmitter. I did away with using a transformer for the uh, voltages. You just uh, connect the thing directly into the wall. And there was a little neon bulb in the circuit that would glow if you had it plugged in wrong. Um, <laughs> I don't know how many people they lost. <laughs> like that. Okay. Yeah. Number five is what? Um, capacitor? No. Number five. Diode. It's a diode. Diode, yeah, diode. Number eight. The light emitting diode. Light emitting diode. Okay, because of the arrows. Number 10. Zener diode. Zener diode, because it's got that uh, little wiggly. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Dr. Zener. Okay. Uh, this, this gizmo. P potentiometer, no. Okay, and this. Resistor. Okay, and this. Inductor, transformer. Transformer, because you have two, two inductors, and this is uh, supposed to be some kind of a core between the two. So they're not hooked up together, but uh, they share a magnetic field. So uh, this induces the magnetic field into this. And because the uh, you have alternating current, you know, it's going on and off, on and off, you're having these, the uh, fields going on and off and you now turning this into alternating current. So after after this, what what do you think the uh, electricity looks like after it passes through the diode? Single wave rectified. Okay, it's not going to go zip, 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 zip. It's going to go bump. It's going to ignore that uh, bottom cycle, then bump, bump, bump. Now, the beauty of this 
is that for each bump, it gets charged up and stores the electricity. When there's no voltage, it contributes the electricity back. So it's not going to be totally uh, smooth and steady, but it's going to be uh, sort of you know, closer to direct current than uh, you'd expect. DC, yeah. Okay, and uh, no, these are the uh, kinds of uh, answers that uh, the uh, quiz will uh, give you. What is a relay? Current controlled amplifier, inverting amplifier, pass transistor. No, it's an auto controlled switch. As was right. um, as was mentioned uh, last week, uh, these are going to be scrambled all over the place. So don't uh, always uh, think that. Uh, uh, Answer C is going to be the right one. All right. And here's more of the symbols, batteries. Uh, this is fairly important. That little fork type thing is a, uh, a ground to the chassis. So all the, all the components are grounded to that. This goes into the ground. And I have uh, several uh, eight foot poles that I've driven down into, into the ground, into earth, to uh, help uh, against lightning strikes and things of that sort. And then uh, this is called common ground, it's usually for uh, digital types of circuits. This is an antenna. And usually, you, if you put an initial in there, it'll uh, tell you what kind of uh, thing it's measuring. Volt, millivolts, amps, milliamps, microamps. And uh, what that is, actually, is it's a, uh, a magnet in a coil. Uh, the magnetic, uh, the coil produces a magnetic uh, field and uh, forces the needle, which is attached to the magnet, to uh, move, the more uh, with oh, the uh, bigger the uh, amount of voltage or whatever uh, is propelling that uh, field, the more the meter is going to go. Circuit breakers, fuse, lamps. Uh, this, well, now uh, we're getting rid of most of the incandescent lamps. And I don't think I see uh, very many neon lamps. Although if you break open the uh, fluorescent uh, light starter canister, they usually have a neon lamp in there. So filled with neon gas. And it uh, glows at uh, temperatures above, or temperatures, voltages above uh, 90. All right, AC wiring. This is the wall. Hot, neutral, ground. Neutral is white, black is hot, ground is green. So if you open up the uh, the sockets, that's after you uh, turn the circuit breaker off, and you'll uh, see a green wire or a bare wire for the ground. You'll see a white wire for the uh, neutral and a black wire for the hot. Okay. Okay, this is a uh, really, really uh, simple circuit. We have, uh, this is called, well, first of all, is, is this a, uh, a field tra junction uh, tr transistor or a uh, bipolar? FET, isn't it? Oh, NBN uh, bipolar. It's it's a uh, um, um, bipolar from the position of the arrow, arrow. It would be an NPN type, which means that the positive. Wait, no, yeah. 
anyway, the current is flowing from here through the light bulb here. If you uh, put a small voltage on this, you can vary the brightness of this lamp. If you put a potentiometer or no voltage with a potentiometer on it and adjust it up or down, the light will go up and down. If you put a microphone here and start speaking into it, this will flicker according to the voice. Okay. Um. All right. Um, I, okay, we already went through this. We're going to ask you a different uh, no, different questions, different ver versions of this because we have different versions of tests. Okay. Now for something completely different, as they said in Monty Python. What do these arrows mean in this uh, component? Anyone? I want to push your uh, adjustable anything. Adjustable <laughs> anything, yeah. And uh, two straight lines. In this case, adjustable capacitor. Yeah. So we have two adjustable capacitors going to the antenna or the antenna line, and we have a uh, an inductor here. Now, what you're trying to do in this this is a uh, a, a T network. What you're, what you're trying to do is to make sure the impedance that the transmitter sees, uh, number one goes to the transmitter. The impedance uh, makes the trans transmitter happy so it doesn't blow up. And uh, this tries to adjust to the, try to resonate to the antenna so you get uh, maximum flow of current through there. So. Anyway, it's called an antenna tuner. Most people nowadays are buying uh, these uh, $200, $250 automatic antenna tuners, which have a whole bunch of little switches and stuff and do all this for you instead of having to uh, twist two dials and look at a meter at the same time. That's what is component four. Anyone? Seth, lean Antenna. on your space bar. Antenna. Okay, that's an antenna. Okay. Now, uh, here's the funny thing. When I was 16 years old, uh, we no, you according to FCC regulations, you're not supposed to test that much on the air. So uh, it's a uh, good good practice to uh, put your uh, transmitter or transceiver into a dummy load, which uh, just uh, takes the power, contains it, and doesn't let it radiate out. Uh, in the old days. We used 100 watt light bulbs that we'd uh, hook up to the uh, uh, terminal of our transmitters. And uh, you, know, you can see the light bulbs light up as you uh, adjust the transmitter. And some people have had made uh, some long distance contacts using those light bulbs. So uh, they weren't very good at containing radio frequency power. All right, I'm talked out. Okay. Questions? Okay, well, you're you're at 
about five to nine. So. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. So uh, come on, guys. Oh, stop share over here. I see John Marr. You have a nice smile on your face. <laughs> okay. So, you know, it's, I went through it uh, like uh, Grant took uh, Richmond. So, uh, questions now? If you don't figure out some questions now, I, I will ask again uh, next week and see if uh, it's, uh, you know, it's impossible for everybody to absorb the stuff that I gave you at such a pace. So, I, I expect you to have some questions. Um, you can uh, uh, email us. I'm uh, you know, w9npi at uh, arrl.net. And uh, we'd be glad to answer questions uh, later on when you're uh, looking to uh, set a station up. I have a uh, little thing I'll send to each of you called uh, What Every Young Ham Should Know. <laughs> what and, about old hams? <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> And, uh, you know, uh, some questions, some of my prejudices and th things of that sort. And uh, uh, if you don't have an Elmer, then uh, we'll act as Elmers until you uh, do get one. But uh, we Jerry, I thought, though, What I thought was uh, interesting was the, the purpose of each of those circuits. You know, I know they were just asking us what a component was within those circuits, but I thought it interesting. It doesn't really tell you that. It, in the practice exams and stuff, it just says, what is this one component? And you, and hmm. you pick it out. But I, I was interested to know about the, the antenna tuner <laughs> and how it worked. I appreciated that very much because I don't get that from the other materials I have. Okay. Well, uh, one nice thing that's going to cost you, uh, I don't know, 50, 75 bucks, but the uh, Radio Amateurs Handbook has everything that you uh, need to know about uh, any aspect of the, uh, well, I can't say the entire hobby, but uh, it'll uh, it'll get you going. It'll explain all sorts of stuff and uh, get you in, uh, in the beginning. There are digital modes that uh, you'll want to try later on, which uh, are going to be, uh, well, they have uh, special uh, books for that. But I, I think you're going to do great. All right, let's see. Um, XC, okay. I see somebody worked out. Okay. And uh, yeah, Jeff Tukowski, uh I'm glad you're still with us. Um, the uh, the problem is there every, every couple of years, uh, something becomes in fashion and something else goes out of fashion. Uh, yeah, there's a, a, a mode called PSK, which was uh, just the latest thing four years ago. And now uh, not too many people are using it. They have, they have uh, even different uh, digital uh, ways. Okay. Two and 22, 22, that was, yeah, that was, uh, you probably never heard of the uh, 2N107. And Dennis, you are absolutely uh, correct, but it's uh, it's it's more for the transmitter's sake than for the antenna's sake. Uh, the other thing that we uh, try to push is that uh, there's no no perfection. Everything you do is going to be some kind of a compromise. Uh, when we talk about uh, SWR on antennas. You're never going to get the 1.000 to 1 ratio. There's always going to be uh, some little fault. Maybe uh, uh, an extra coaxial connector is going to uh, add a loss or something of that sort. Okay. Oh, all right. Anything else? Okay, we're good. All right, I'm going to stop recording if I can find the button. Um,